Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and this is the first of a four-part series on creating Quake 2 MD2 models for paper vision. Now, in a previous post, I showed you how to create a viewer and how to bring models into that viewer, but if that's all I do, I haven't done my job. Because it's not enough just to grab models. There's not really enough of them on the web. You've got to be able to create your own, and it's a fairly simple process, and we're going to do it. We're going to show you how to do that today and uh, you'll be making your own MD2 models before you know it. Now there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is it's easy. The bad news there are tons of steps but all of them are simple. It's a four-step process. You have to create your model in a modeling application such as Maya or 3ds Max. You want to texture and then export that model from that application. You want to prepare that model in Milkshake. Now Milkshake comes to the rescue. Uh, it's a program we've been using for years. Uh, it's, it was developed originally for Half-Life and now it supports about 70 or so uh, plugins to basically bring in different models and export them as different formats. It also has some basic modeling capabilities as well but today we're going to use it pretty much in a sense to wash the format, to change the 3ds Max format into the MB2 format and you can do the same procedure for Maya and there's similar procedures for all the other modeling programs as well. Once it's done, we want to export that to a model viewer, the one we created in the previous post. So let's say a few things of how that goes. Uh, there's, like I said, four steps. You want to create your model, and we'll go over that in a moment. You can look at all these steps for texturing. I mean, 3ds Max, you got 14 steps <laughs> to put a texture onto a model. In uh, Blender, it's only three or four. But remember, in 3ds Max, you have a huge ability to add realism, and that's why you have so many steps here. Uh, step three for the uh, milkshake part, there's nine steps. All easy steps, but uh, they're not really written down anywhere, so we're putting them here so you can actually uh, refer to this and make your own models. And finally, we'll show you how to put that in an exporter. And we have a chapter called Walking on Air in the book, and we'll be uh, using that to show you how to create an air application, do a lot more to interface with your uh, basically your operating system or whatever's on the web, and pull down those models and look at them dynamically. So let's go and get started with this. We're going to go right to 3ds Max. Just one thing I want you to remember about 3ds Max, a few things here, is that we have extensive tutorials on the book's blog and on the book's website on how to use 3ds Max. The whole purpose here is to get you going. Let's take a look at that real quick. We're on a book's blog right now, and if you go to uh, modeling, you're going to see we have a number of of tutorials on modeling 3ds Max, Blender, Swift 3D, and Collada are coming. Of course, all of this is in support of the book Professional Paper Vision 3D. But you know, our purpose is not necessarily to sell the book though we want to, it's actually to help you guys out. And so we've provided all these extra resources with the book to get you rolling. I mean, there's just so much satisfaction in being part of the, the open source community and helping people accomplish uh, their dreams in multimedia. So with that said, let me just say one more thing. So you can go to that, and Alex Green uh, on the 3ds Max tutorial has a, a large set of working with Photoshop and setting up your textures. Here we're going to build a very simple model just to show you the whole process. One thing you want to keep in mind as you build your models, of course, is hit that 7 key in uh, 3ds Max so you can watch your polygon your verts and keep those polygon and verts low. One of the great things about CS4 as opposed to Paper Vision is that you don't have to put as many uh, polygon sides to keep your models from sagging or your images from sagging. And you know, if in paper vision, if you don't put enough polygons on the side, your image will sag as you rotate it around. But that doesn't happen in CS4, so we're very much looking forward to paper vision X, which should be coming out in the next few months. So let's go to 3ds Max and build our simple model. So we're in 3ds Max right now, and kind of this is where we're headed. You can see this is a very scaled down, basic, simple model, which pretty much just has a solid color sides on it. And we're going to go ahead and build this model, and then we'll texture it in the next video. So let's start anew and build this model. Okay, we've got a blank screen. We're going to come up here, and I'll move this around. Just be patient with me. I'm going to click right here. Okay. And we're going to grab a box, and we're going to bring that out on the screen, and we're going to start modeling a box and turn it into a house. So just put your cursor here, and we're going to do all this in perspective view, and bring that up. Pretty cool. Okay. Now I want to turn this into an edible poly, so I'm going to right-click on it, and just so convert to edible poly. 
And now I can actually start to basically uh, extrude and uh, bevel and do what I need to do. I want to make sure in the poly mode that I'm in uh, the faces or polygon side. Now I'm going to go up to edge at the end. So just remind that, remember that, that what I'm going to be doing is going up to this menu and hitting edge. But first I start with polygon mode. And let's go back down. So I'm in polygon mode right now. And you can see as I click the different sides, they highlight. I want to click the top. I want to come over here and I want to hit bevel. And there's my bevel tool right there. I'm going to come up just a little bit. And I'm going to bring it out a little bit. There we go. And then I want to extrude. So hit extrude. And just bring the house up a little bit. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, basically click on two edges. So I'm going up here to edge mode. I'm going to click on the edge. And I'm just going to highlight one edge. Hit the control key and highlight the other. And then I'm going to come up to my keyboard and I'm going to shrink this. So I'm going to hit the R key. Let's see. Let me try that one more time. I think I clicked something wrong. Control, control. Let's hit that R key. Right. And I'm just going to shrink that in. There we go. All right, and there's kind of a funny looking house. I mean, it's not the best house in the world. Let's uh, control R that and arc rotate around. There we go. And there it is. So at this point, if you've built your house, though simple it may be, as I've said in other tutorials, you can just spend hours and hours modeling and it's just super fun in 3ds Max. So go back and look at those tutorials on the book's website and book blog. Uh, become a great modeler. If you're going to learn a program, 3ds Max is that modeling program to learn. And uh, if you can't afford it, well, Blender's free and it runs on the Mac as well. Uh, we're done with the first part. Uh, you've made your house, and now you're ready to put a texture on it, and we'll do that next time. Thanks a lot for listening. This is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University.